go to the power insurance group dot com. All right, get to the power insurance group hotline. You did a good friend, Coach Houston Nutt. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, Houston. Good, good morning, guys. How y'all doing? Thank you for being on. I know it's been a a hard time for you to get on for us, and I, I really appreciate it. We've visited a little bit, and appreciate you doing what you've done. Uh, yeah. I guess the first question I would ask you, since you were at the University of Tennessee speaking yesterday, a lot of rumors that that Fulmer will be the coach when they after they get beat some more. Uh, to save money, uh, and then I, I hope not. But uh, can you make any any thoughts and comments on that? Yeah, I don't think so. After listening to a few people and talking to you, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I think they're going to hang in there with Jeremy, and um, uh, I, I, you know, there's some that uh, feel like there's there there has been a little bit of improvement. I know when you lose, it doesn't you can't probably see it from the outside looking in, and you don't like to get beat, especially against Georgia State, things like that. But, um, no, I, I don't see that. I think uh, Coach Fulmer's going to be the athletic director. I think Jeremy's going to be the coach. And uh, it's just tough times. You know, it's tough times. It's not easy. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of tradition there. And you just keep expecting Tennessee to, to, to make that move, make that step. So it's important, you know, the next, uh, you know, <clears throat> four, five, six games that, that they get back on track. But, uh, you know, it's not easy, especially now when they got to go play Georgia. Do they have the ability to get back on track? Um, is they, they, I, 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 I don't coach. Their team. Yeah, well, they, Coach, they? that's a good that's a good question. I, I, I think when you look at the schedule, the East is, is really down to me. I mean, it's really down. So I think when you look at the East side, uh, besides Georgia, Georgia is there, then there's a big separation. To me, that's where they've got to. They've got to go down that schedule uh, after the, especially after the Georgia game and uh, you got to start going and you got they still have Mississippi State <clears throat> they got South Carolina they got UAB Kentucky Missouri Vanderbilt of those games you know you the magic number you're trying to get to six in the worst way sure so uh, I, I, I think they can I think they can that's gonna be it's gonna be difficult because you still got to play Georgia that's they got an open week this week you play Georgia you still got to play Alabama you lick your wounds right there but you're hoping you know UAB Kentucky Missouri South Carolina be there's some games that you can put together and you take care of the ball and don't turn it over do all the things that we know that's right you got a chance okay uh we're talking with coach Houston Nutt. in that situation really any situation uh if your quarterback's struggling uh, and you want to try a new guy, and maybe it's a freshman. Does it factor in, uh, coach, when your next game is Georgia? Uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult because you don't want to ruin a guy's career. You throw him out there against Georgia, maybe it'll make his career. I guess South Carolina did against Alabama. Uh, when is the right time to make a change? And if it's a team like Georgia coming in, would you – make a move then yeah. uh, I, I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't yeah. I probably wouldn't I, I'd get him some reps and it's like you said you you hate to just throw a young guy to the wolves where you know it could be <laughs> in his memory for a long time but uh, you know you, you got to try to put the best one out there if the other guy just can't do it he keeps throwing to the other the other team or it doesn't take care of the ball is one thing but you're hoping Garantano can, can come on he's getting better and and stay with the game plan and don't try to be Superman and take care of the ball um, and then bring that other guy slowly is what you'd like to do. But, uh, you know, again, it's uh, it's tough times. You know, it's really tough, and, you know, the noise will get loud and louder, and and uh, it's not easy. And that's where the coaches, boy, got to do a great, great job. And, you know, Arkansas is going through the same thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It's, it's uh, I, I don't know any answers. It, the the problem that you're having at Arkansas and probably at Tennessee both is the, is the ability to recruit for the future because of your right. record. Now you may have some some kids come that are questionable that know they can play very quickly. Um, I think Tennessee does a little bit better job. He does a little bit better job of, of recruiting than they do at Arkansas. Comment on this Arkansas program. Yeah, uh, coach, you're right. You know that you hit on something that's so important when you when your stands aren't full. And and the noise gets loud, and you lose to a San Jose State, uh, you're going to lose recruits. Yeah, and it's hard, man. It's really hard, and and so your players and 
and, and your coach, your assistant coaches, got to do an unbelievable job. Now, I thought they 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 did recruit pretty good for a two and ten last year. If you look at some of the receivers, some of the players that are playing now that are freshmen, they really did a pretty good job of getting certain players. The problem is the, in the line of scrimmage, and you know this is the line of scrimmage line uh, league, and this line of scrimmage they have right now, especially on the offensive side, it, it's just not very good. Yeah, and so. Uh, man, that, that's a hard way to pull yourself out. you got to dig your way out of it, and maybe it's not easy. Uh, we're talking with Coach Houston. Now, Coach Auburn um, at Texas A&M. I, thought Gus, I think Gus Malzahn, you can answer this better, maybe you coached against him, but they go so fast. I think it's hard to defend them, uh, and I don't know if he scripts – uh, so many plays to start the game, but I thought the start they got off to at Texas A&M, man, they were ready to play. They were ready to go. Uh, how much does that energize your team, man, when you get that football and you take that thing down the first series and you run it right down their throat, you got them all off balance, you're going fast, you score a touchdown, that's got to be a humongous shot in the arm uh, when you're on the road. That's That was huge, wasn't it? It, it, it is, Barry, and when you go into a hostile environment, the 102,000 plus, that first five minutes, and your dad knows this better than anybody, the first five minutes is so critical because of all the emotion. You know how hyped they were. Texas a and was really expecting the win, home field advantage, all that. But, no, exactly what you said, they take the ball, march it down, they got them off balance, and Swartz, man, lightning. I mean, lightning speed, very fast. Bo Nix continues to mean he gets better and better. Not not great, great, but he he gets better. And you can tell he's played quarterback all his life. He's gonna be he's gonna be real good one day. But here's the bottom line: defense. They got a front seven that's probably right now better than anybody in the league. Now, now Alabama's got some people hurt, and we know that. But you look at you look at Auburn run to the ball, and there's there's nothing happening. Uh, that's going forward against that defensive front. They they are fast. The the Nick Coles, Derek Brown, uh, Marlon Davis, and all those guys are just so quick and disruptive. They get you behind the count in the secondary. You don't hear about them. They're athletic. They're underrated. So to me, if you got a defense like that that gets the ball back to the offense, and then you quiet in the crowd the first five minutes and you score first. Man, you you took the crowd out of it and took that. That home field advantage, I always think home's three or seven point favorite. Uh, not not that day because of what you said, the way they started the game. Yeah, it was incredible. The, uh, the, the league, to be quite honest with you, call them, talking about the SEC, has got more poor teams in it than we've yeah. had in years. Uh, yeah. Teams that just uh, are going to have a long time of Tennessee's and Vanderbilt's and Arkansas's and Ole Misses. It's, it's really um, difficult to to run around and talk about how tough the leagues are. I know the West is better, but it's it it. Uh, I I think it's um you know for the Final Four just to want just you know Barry keeps talking about two might get in. It's all kind of circumstances they could, but I, I you know with with Big Ten with Wisconsin good and Ohio State good, um, it, it's it's going to be interesting and Clemson good. I, I think it's you know it's a one bid league for the, for SEC. I, I agree with you. I, I think it's down. Uh, and, uh, again, it's top-heavy when you look. I, I can't wait because we get into the meat of the schedule. LSU looks so different offensively and looks so good on that side, but uh, they're not as good as they've been in the past on defense either. And then uh, Florida, you know, we still don't know. Uh, they're, they're undefeated right now, but their defensive line looks pretty good, but you don't know offensively. It looks like Kyle Trash is fitting in. But you're right. But Florida, Georgia, you got Alabama, LSU, Auburn, and then there's there's drop offs. Yeah. But you can also say that, coach, when you look at ACC, look at Clemson, I can say their their league's a drop off too. Yeah, it is. Uh, I look at Big Ten. Uh, everybody's expecting Michigan. I don't see it. I see Ohio State and I see Wisconsin. Wisconsin hadn't been talked about that much preseason, but I love the way they play. They know who they are. They're hard nosed. They come downhill. They play good defense. They're in the right places. Jonathan Taylor's running wild. So I think I think Wisconsin will play Ohio State twice. I think they'll play them in the regular season. I bet they go back and play them in a championship game. Just looking after three or four weeks. And the West Coast, man, I just I, I think 
I, I don't see how they're going to. Oregon, Oregon. Oregon's got to. Oregon's got to be kicking themselves because really they outplayed Auburn, yeah, had Auburn did. on and turned it over, um, and now it looks like you know they're playing pretty well. So I don't know. I, it's just it's going to be interesting. Uh, Coach Judy Ruggs, Devontae oh. Smith, and Waddle with <laughs> Tua. I know what what you're seeing now is always the best, but I'm not sure if I've ever seen and you you you've seen a lot more football than me. Have you ever seen a quarterback with that combination of receivers? Could that possibly possibly be the best ever in college football? Am I crazy to say that? No, no, you're not. Uh, the way these guys, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs the third, Waddle, Devontae Smith, the way they create separation, I ain't never seen anything like it. Every time you look up, it's like a video game. They're they're past their defender. They're 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 already coming out of the break, and the DB still backpedaling. And Tua, with his anticipation and his accuracy, it's unbelievable. Now, the thing that that, that keeps in my mind, Coach, hang with me on this one. I keep thinking now. Now, where where's that where's that running game? You keep waiting on that too, because you keep thinking, okay, you gotta. I, I know Coach Saban. I know he wants to run it, but my gosh, <laughs> the way they score and the way they just get open, uh, it's unbelievable. And then you all, you worry a little bit about defensively because they got so many hurt, and you know, lose a quarterback on that side like Dylan Moses. Uh, but you you just know, you know, he's recruited so good and some names we don't know. But getting back to your question, Barry, I, I have never seen anything like it that had that many. You try to double Judy. You got problems because rugs just don't get open. You you go double rugs, uh, you know Waddle is going is going to be there. So it's just it's it's unbelievable. Well, can They're you can you have a good running game when you got that many receivers and you're not going to be run, handing the ball off that much? Which I don't blame them. You play to your strengths. I think all these fans right here are going crazy. Well, we're not going to be able to score uh, yeah. against a Clemson when we get in the red zone because we can't pound the football in the field strengths. Yeah. Uh, but can you have a good running game? With that many great receivers, because you got to throw it, don't you, Houston? You got to play to your strengths. Well, that's what they're doing. I mean, there's no question. I, I just feel, I just know, I just feel like, and I, and I'm not at practice, but I just got to feel like each and every day they're going to take two to three running plays and say, uh, "We're going to get better at this. We've got to eventually have." There's, there's just some days where, you, you know, <laughs> the one thing that doesn't always travel is is offense. And now, now two of them may prove us wrong, but there's going to be some day where the ball or the wind or something where it just doesn't look like you better go, you better have that running game. But hey, he could prove us all wrong. Say this is our strength, this is what we do, and and uh, you better guard these four receivers. Yeah, and we'll spread the field sideline to sideline, and we're going to get open. And this is our running game. You know, maybe I, I, hey, I think if I were playing against him, I would do what I could do to get to him. Now, I understand it's hard to do. The offensive line is good. But if he's got a weak point or a point that's hard to, to do, uh, I'd work my fan off trying to get to to uh, as, as best I could. Yeah. We're going to try to disrupt him. Yeah, when you do that, now you're going to – it I depends know. on how many you bring, but you, you, you're you into one-on-ones. And, and what's so you need far, to we've bring, seen those guys. You need to bring don't you? <laughs> I'd say the one that – and that's yeah. where Auburn, to me, is, is, is a team where – they can rush four and get home, yeah. and what I mean by that is they can get to get to a quarterback with their four. Yeah. And now when you got seven behind them, mix yeah. it up zone. You go over four. You had yeah. if you go over four, you've had it, hadn't you? <laughs> I, I think with, I think with Tua, like Barry says, with Tua, a tongue of Iloa and his <laughs> weapons, I think you I think you're in big trouble. Yeah, Alabama will be in big trouble. Probably Houston if. If he were to go down, because then your defense oh, is yeah, not quite yeah. as good. Now this next guy is not going to throw it like him, and now you're going to have to run the ball. So keeping that guy healthy uh, is probably the key to the to the entire season, right? Uh, I, I agree, one thousand percent, one thousand percent. You got to have that guy. And he's your point guard, and you better make sure he's on the floor. Yep. Well, Houston, we sure we sure do appreciate you being on. You've been awful nice to try to work things around, yep. and I won't hit you up much, but every now and then. You bet. You bet. Enjoy coming on with you guys. Coach, thank, thank you, you very it. much. Have a great week. See you.